How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs and I wanna to talk to you about backup power for your home and give you some examples so you can fit the right system to your need. There are a few critical appliances, your refrigerator, freezer being one of those that you want to be able to keep up and running during a power outage to avoid losing all your food and having to throw it out or avoid bursting pipes if you're in cold conditions like myself and you wanna keep your gas furnace running or keep water out of your basement by keeping your sump pump pumping water out of your basement. Those are all three critical examples that I think through to power my own home. And I have a few different examples here that I'll show you from EcoFlow that might fit your need depending on what those critical appliances are for yourself. But most importantly, I'm gonna show you how to assess that need. How much power output capability do you need and how much energy overall will you need in terms of capacity of the batteries that you have on hand. Now this can be a little complex running all the numbers, but I'll give you a tangible example with this refrigerator freezer and you'll be able to apply that same principle to the appliances in your home and then select the correct portable power station for your use case. So let's jump into it. Most videos with portable power stations are gonna go right into the actual features and specification of each unit, comparing and contrasting, which is super valuable. But because we're really thinking through backup power for a home, I want to help you assess your need first. What is the power consumption of something like your refrigerator freezer so you know you're getting the right unit and you have an expectation on how long could that actually power your appliances. So what I'm doing here is I'm just using an energy watt meter. I have the gray cord, power cord, coming from the refrigerator freezer and then an extension cord going back to the 120 outlet behind the unit. What this $13 device does is it helps me monitor some duration of time, the overall power consumption, and a few other critical variables, which then I can use to actually assess my need. So if I had no power in the house, I would have to be powering this with my portable power station. And I need to have a good understanding of this appliance or I might select the wrong unit. So let's take a closer look and show you some of those critical parameters. So we've been powering this unit for exactly two hours. One of the critical parameters that you'd wanna look at is kilowatt hours. What is that? That is energy consumption. So how much energy has this appliance consumed over a two hour interval? And that is gonna be 0.18 kilowatt hours, or if we converted that into watt hours, that would be 180 watt hours. This is gonna come in super handy to compare that to the overall battery energy capacity. So we know how long would a battery power appliance such as this, knowing what the overall energy consumption is gonna be. Now with this energy watt meter, there's a few other parameters. Obviously you can read out voltage. This is the voltage at any given time. Amperage, so it's pulling 1.41 amps. Watts, this is low. So this is the lowest amount of power in watts that it pulled, so right at 10. Watts high. Why this would be critical is because you wanna make sure that your portable power station can deliver at least the high amount of wattage just to make sure you don't trip anything in the portable power station. So this parameter of 377 is critical to compare to the specification, making sure that the continuous or surge power output of your portable power station is well over 377 watts. So that is one definitely to track. So really the wattage here for your high is critical to compare to the portable power station. And then going back to the energy consumption over a duration of time, that's really gonna help us compare to the battery capacity so we can have an estimate on how long can we actually run this refrigerator freezer. So we take that information from the energy watt meter and if you guys don't have one of those, there is a link in the description below this video. I recommend getting one for 13 to $15 if you're trying to make this assessment for those critical appliances, it comes in super handy. So the three units that I'm considering from EcoFlow is the River 2 Pro, the Delta 2, and the Delta Pro. You can see the prices, you can see the dimensions, you can see the weight. One thing to consider, the Delta Pro is amazing, but it is almost 100 pounds. So in terms of portability, lugging it down in your basement and around your house, just consider that. That is a heck of a unit. And for most of us, lugging 100 pounds around is just not feasible. So something to consider. But when it comes to actually assessing the battery capacity, 
That would be one major thing that I'd want to assess. And also the AC output. So from the inverter integrated into these units, how much continuous AC output in watts and also surge is something you'd want to look at depending on what you're powering. If we go back, we saw 0.18 kilowatt hours was how much energy we consumed over two hour interval. We can take that two hour interval and we can actually convert to like an average power usage of that refrigerator. For things like refrigerators, you need to be careful just taking the instantaneous power consumption because it might not be in a cooling cycle. So the watt wattage draw could be substantially lower and it's going to cycle over time. So that's why you want to take these longer intervals like two hours to get a good average consumption in terms of power. So here 90 watts or 0.09 kilowatts is that average power consumption. So what we could do is we could pull up a calculator here and two things we want to look at AC output continuous. Remember we saw that 400 watts or under 400 watts was the maximum power consumption during that two hour cycle. So we'd want to compare that to continuous here and possibly surge if we just go right over continuous. But here we're well within it. So 400 watts is the maximum power draw. The River 2 Pro, the smallest unit, can deliver 800 watts continuously. So we're well within that envelope and all of these units would have no issue providing that amount of power at any given time. Then let's go up to battery because that's really how long are we going to be able to run this appliance or multiple appliances off of this unit. So what I would take in terms of the River 2 Pro is 768 watt hours and then I would go ahead and divide that by that average watts from the refrigerator. So that would give me about eight and a half hours. So that River 2 Pro can power my refrigerator freezer continuously for eight and a half hours. Now what happens if you powered it for one hour, unplugged it, didn't open it, then powered in for another hour? Maybe you could stretch that out a little bit, keeping the temperature maybe not a, at exactly your set point, but keeping it where the food is not spoiling. But 8.5 hours is a safe assumption. If you stepped up to the Delta II, you take the 1024 divided by 90, and that's gonna stretch out to 11.4 or almost 11 and a half hours. So a nice little bump up there. And then if you go to the Monster Delta Pro with 3,600 watt hours of capacity, that is gonna power you for 40 hours. Again, the Delta Pro in price and weight and battery capacity, everything is, is just a real substantial step up. And that is starting to get to be a whole house backup solution, which I have shown in past videos. So it's kind of hard to compare that to the Delta II and the River 2 Pro, but the Delta II at 27 pounds and the River 2 Pro at 17 pounds is extremely portable. And you could absolutely take it down in your basement if you need to power your sump pump for a while or power your furnace for a while to make sure your home is getting heated. So hopefully that helps you assess your need. Let me know down in the comments if you guys have any questions as you run through your own numbers. But I wanna show you the River 2 Pro versus the Delta 2, just so you can see some of the features side by side. Your overall displays are gonna be very similar. They're both can be connected to Wi-Fi and they both can be connected to the EcoFlow app, which honestly is a pretty great app and I've had good luck with it over time with the stability and all the features working. Now on the River 2 Pro, you basically have everything in terms of what you can plug in and get as output on the front side here. You have your four AC outlets. You would need to turn those on with this switch to turn the inverter on. You have to turn those on because an inverter will draw power. So you wanna turn that off when you're not actually leveraging those to make sure you're efficiently using your battery. Then you have all your USB ports with that USB-C 100 watt comes in super handy for fast charging phones and then also all of our laptops are switching over that. So very handy port. Now when it comes to the Delta II, you're gonna have all your USB on the front side. You're gonna have two of those USB-Cs. Do not overlook that. Again, we could turn on the app. I could connect up to this Delta II, plugging in my laptop to charge it in one of the USB-C 100 watt, maximum but 100 watt power output. 
I can turn on the USB on off switch to power these to start charging here at the unit or I can do that remotely through the app and control some features like that actually at the app and away from the home as long as I have Wi-Fi connection. And then on the display and on the app, you're gonna see the overall power output. So this is what we're putting out. And then if that was a continuous load, it will give us an estimated time to drain the percentage of battery. So at a 93 watt power output load, it would take me about three hours to drain down 30% of this Delta II. Now, when it comes to the AC side, that's where the Delta II is gonna vary. But the AC side, we're gonna have two prong, four of those outlets here, and then two of the three prong. Again, you're gonna have your on off switch. We're gonna to wanna to keep that off. We wanna save that power draw from the inverter being powered. And then we have the same cigarette lighter DC that you see here on the River II Pro. You're gonna have that on your Delta II. And then on the back side here, and then we'll have our 120 input to charge. And also here for solar charging, I'll expand on that here in one minute. That is all the River 2 Pro will have on the back is that same inputs to charge things up. The way they match these up, the battery capacity compared to how much you can flow through the 120, it takes about an hour to charge these batteries from nothing to full. So pretty convenient if you did have a power outage. The portability of these, they're light enough, you can throw them in your car. If a friend had power, you could take your power cord over to their house, charge these up, and then bring them back to cool down your refrigerator, power your sump pump, power your furnace, whatever that is. So let me know what you guys think. In terms of a backup solution, which one would you go for? Or is there another brand like Anker or Blue Eddy that you're looking at? Now, I didn't go into the Delta Pro. I think that's a whole nother size class. It is extremely capable. There's some amazing applications where it comes in super handy, but I will put multiple links in the description below this video to videos I've done in the past using one unit to plug into my generator inlet and power my panel out in the garage, using two units units and a dual voltage hub to provide 240 backup power just like I had a gas generator but without all the noise and without the fumes and without it running in the driveway. But if I had to pick a backup solution that I was going to pay for and it meets my needs, I like the River 2 Pro but it doesn't quite have the capabilities I would look for. So I would go with the Delta 2. For $1,000, and it does vary over time in terms of price, I like the capacity. The output is way more capable in terms of what it can produce a continuous load at. And if I needed a little bit more battery capacity, you can get an expandable battery for this to double your overall battery capacity, but keeping everything very portable. In addition to backup for my home, I could also use this out in camping trips, tailgating, on the job site, powering my power tools, or even as a power solution for a shed or detached garage in your yard that maybe is not tied into the grid. And what makes that super practical is if you leverage the solar capabilities. So one reason I would go with the Delta II over the River 2 Pro is the River 2 Pro can only bring in 200 watts of solar charging and the Delta II can bring in 500 watts. So that is considerably more and needed if you're pulling power from these units to go ahead and charge back up the batteries. If you wanna dive more into that and actually how to configure solar panels in a few different ways, check out this video right here over on our Everyday Solar channel where we'll take this unit and actually dive into the different wiring that you might need to do depending on your panel size. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.